Hello, I'm Dr. Reed Schufer. I've created this presentation to help our pet owners understand diabetes mellitus. Please watch the presentation, and then we will have time to discuss any questions you may have. Diabetes is a disorder of blood sugar metabolism, which results in chronically high blood sugar levels, or hyperglycemia. In order to understand diabetes, we must review the, some basic facts about sugar metabolism in the body. When we eat, food is broken down into its basic components in the stomach and intestines. The proteins, fats, and sugars are then absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to the liver for further processing. Sugar is the main source of energy for the body. It is obtained through eating, but can also be created in the liver to a limited extent. The brain can only use glucose for energy. If the sugar cannot get into the brain, as we see in diabetes, the brain cannot function properly. When sugar is not available, the body will break down fat into substances called ketone bodies, which can be used for energy. This fuel is much less efficient than sugar and causes the blood to become too acidic, which leads to severe illness. If we find ketones in the urine of a diabetic, we know that they are not regulated properly. After we eat, blood sugar rises and the body secretes insulin from the pancreas to allow the sugar to cross into the cells and be utilized as fuel. Looking at the chart to the right, you will see that the amount of blood sugar rises after eating, then falls back to normal as insulin takes effect. The goal of the body is to maintain blood sugar levels between 80 and 130 milligrams per DL. In contrast to a normal pet, blood sugar rises much higher than normal and does not return to normal in pets with diabetes. The chart at the right compares the blood sugar levels of normal pets, the lowest line, pre-diabetic pets, the middle line, and pets with diabetes, the highest line. You can see that the glucose level goes way too high and never returns to normal in the diabetic. The body attempts to keep blood sugar below 130 milligrams per ml in normal pets. If the blood sugar goes over 180 milligrams, the so-called renal threshold, then sugar will spill over into the urine. Sugar acts through osmotic pressure to then draw more water into the urine and make it more dilute. Since the diabetic pet is urinating so much volume, he or she develops excessive thirst to make up for the water losses. Let's take a moment to look at the causes of diabetes. In pets, diabetes is most commonly due to reduced production of insulin in the pancreas. Less commonly, resistance to the effect of insulin may be the cause of diabetes. Obesity and excessive carbohydrate ingestion are major risk factors for developing diabetes, especially in cats. In fact, some cats may be able to be cured of diabetes by placing them on diets where carbohydrates make up less than 7% of the diet. The pancreas is the organ which produces insulin. Inflammation or cancer of the pancreas can lead to the reduction or elimination of insulin and thus lead to diabetes. Certain hormones in the body naturally work against insulin to help the body increase blood sugar when it needs it. Cortisone, made in the adrenal glands, and estrogen and progesterone, made in the ovaries and uterus, are the most important of these hormones. Synthetic drugs which mimic these hormones can be lead to diabetes by causing insulin resistance in the tissues. Certain disease states can lead to excessive amounts of these insulin antagonizing hormones and thus lead to diabetes. Examples include Cushing's disease, which causes excess levels of cortisone, and cystic ovaries and infected uterus, or pyometra, which lead to excessive sex hormones, can lead to diabetes in this way. Moving on, let's discuss the symptoms of diabetes. Increased hunger while losing weight is one of the hallmark symptoms of diabetes. The pet remains hungry since they cannot use the sugar in their blood for fuel. Therefore, they have great appetites. In the meanwhile, the body begins to break down the fat reserves for fuel, which can lead to weight loss. As we have discussed, 
Heavy thirst and urination is another common symptom of diabetes due to the excessive water loss in the kidneys as a response to the spilling of glucose in the urine. The lens of the eye is kept clear by an active process that keeps all of the water out of the lens fibers. The high sugar levels in the fluid in the eyes seeps into the lens and draws water into the lens, which then turns it crystalline white, which we call a cataract. Cataracts are opaque and do not allow light to hit the retina and thus lead to blindness. Fortunately, sight can be restored in many diabetics through cataract removal surgery by a veterinary ophthalmologist. High blood sugar affects the conduction of electricity in the peripheral nerves, which can lead to weakness and a wobbly gait. With sustained high blood sugar and the acidification of blood due to the use of fats for fuel, the body becomes out of balance and pets start feeling sick. They become nauseous and will stop eating, start vomiting, and become seriously dehydrated. If left untreated, they will die from this form of diabetes. Let's talk a bit about the goals of treatment for diabetes. We know that the body tries to keep the blood sugar normally between 80 and 130 milligrams per ml. We attempt to keep blood sugar between 100 and 180 or 200 milligrams per ml for the greater part of the day, since we cannot keep constant track of our pet's blood sugar. We want to stabilize the weight of our diabetic patients, which means regaining lost weight for the skinny diabetics or losing weight in the obese diabetics. We want to avoid high blood sugar levels and low blood sugar levels or hypoglycemia. And we want to prevent infections, which are common in diabetics. Treatment of diabetes involves first eliminating metabolic contributors of diabetes, such as infections, cystic ovaries, infected uterus, excessive cortisone, either from the adrenal glands or from external sources. We must place our diabetics on food that is appropriate for their condition. This generally means food with more complex carbohydrates and higher fiber contact in dogs and very low carbohydrate diets in cats. We replace the missing insulin using in injectable insulin products. Most animals require twice daily injections of insulin to maintain adequate control. Finally, we monitor blood sugar levels regularly to ensure the effectiveness of our treatment. If your pet is diabetic, you're going to have to become familiar with how to handle insulin. Because it is a biological product, and could become contaminated with bacteria, most insulin needs to be refrigerated. Insulin is a small protein molecule that is somewhat fragile. Therefore, insulin must be handled gently. It must never be shaken up. Because insulin is a suspension, it can settle to the bottom of the bottle between injections. We must remix the suspension by gently rolling the bottle between the palms of the hands before each use. Small changes in the number of units of insulin <clears throat> can make a big deal. Therefore, we must measure insulin very carefully and accurately. To make this more manageable, each strength of insulin has syringes which are matched to it. You must use the correct type of syringe for your pet's insulin. The strength of insulin is measured in the number of units per milliliter. Insulin comes in either 40 units or 100 units per ml. There are different syringes for 40 unit insulin and 100 unit insulin, and you must use the appropriate syringe for the strength of your pet's insulin. There are many types of insulin, each of which has a different effect on your pet. You must always use the type and strength of insulin that your veterinarian prescribes until he or she changes it. Insulin is a life-saving drug, but it can also be life-threatening if used improperly. Therefore, we have come up with a few simple rules to make sure that you use this drug safely. First, we only give insulin if your pet has eaten at least one half of their normal meal. If they don't eat, the insulin may drive the glucose in the blood down too far, which could lead to hypoglycemia and seizures. Second, always measure the insulin carefully before administering it. Small changes in the amount of insulin can result in big changes in the body. Third, if your pet moves during an injection and you're not sure how much, if any, insulin got under the skin, do not repeat the injection. You run the risk of giving too much insulin, which would lead to hypoglycemia. Fourth, 
If you miss an injection, it is not the end of the world. Just be sure to give the normal amount of the insulin on the next injection at the normal time. Fifth, try to be regular with the insulin and feeding schedules. Feed and inject at the same time of each day, about 12 hours apart. If you accidentally give insulin, but your pet did not eat, you should try to force feed your pet at least half of their normal meal. If you can't force feed or your pet is vomiting, then you'll have to observe your pet closely for signs of hypoglycemia anywhere from three to eight hours after administering the insulin when the effects of the insulin are at their peak. If symptoms occur, then you should have Cairo corn syrup ready to supply your pet with the glucose he or she needs. Diet plays an important role in the treatment of diabetes. We know that obesity and excessive carbohydrates predispose to diabetes, so it only makes sense that reducing carbohydrates and using complex carbohydrates instead of simple sugars help reduce glucose level swings. In cats, we have found that reducing carbohydrates to less than 7% of the diet will sometimes actually cure the disease. Increase in fiber slows the absorption of sugar and leads to better blood sugar control. Maintaining a schedule of twice daily feeding and insulin administration leads to the best regulation in most pets. Hypoglycemia means low blood sugar, and it occurs when the blood sugar goes below 50 milligrams per mil. Since the brain needs glucose to function, the symptoms we see related to brain dysfunction include weakness, disorientation, unusual vocalizations, excessive sleeping, and seizures. Hypoglycemia can be caused by any of the following. First, if the dose of insulin is too high for your pet. Excessive insulin will drive too much of the blood glucose into the cells and leave the glucose levels in the blood too low for the brain to function properly. Second, accidentally injecting too much insulin. This can be done by either mismeasuring or by duplicating injections or by using the wrong strength of insulin. Third, giving insulin when your pet has not eaten. When hypoglycemia occurs, you must first recognize the signs. Once you realize your pet is hypoglycemic, you can help them by applying Cairo syrup to the gums and mouth. The sugar in the syrup can be absorbed directly across the mucous membranes and start to bring up the blood sugar in a few minutes. Once your pet starts to respond, try to force feed them with soft food. If your pet does not respond with Cairo and or food within 10 minutes, bring them to your veterinarian. In any case, anytime your pet experiences hypoglycemia, you should contact your veterinarian before administering the next insulin injection because the likelihood is you are giving too much insulin. Treating diabetes successfully requires regular monitoring. Our goal is to keep the blood sugar between 100 and 200 milligrams per ml during most of the day. We can accomplish this by measuring your pet's blood sugar over the course of the day. These measurements are known as blood glucose curves because we can chart them on graph paper and visualize the results as you can see to the right. These curves tell us if the dose of insulin is appropriate to bring the blood glucose to the right range, and they also tell us for how long the blood sugar stays in that range. Initial testing is usually done in the hospital and may need to be repeated until the right type of insulin and the right dose is found for your pet. We encourage our clients to learn how to perform these measurements at home. With a small investment, you can play a big role in keeping your pet well regulated. In addition to blood glucose curves, we recommend checking the urine for infection at least twice a year, as diabetics are prone to infection with or without symptoms. Routine blood panels are also recommended twice a year to check for other problems associated with diabetes. How can you tell if your pet is responding to treatment? A well-regulated diabetic should show a normalization of the appetite, thirst, and urination patterns. 
you should see a reduction in thirst and urination, which was so prevalent before treatment. Well-regulated diabetics should normalize their weights as well. The pets who lost weight before treatment should gain it back, while the obese pets should lose weight to help reduce the effects of their obesity on the disease. If you see any of the following symptoms, you can assume that your pet is not well regulated and should seek veterinary attention. Weight loss in spite of a good appetite. Persistent increase in thirst and urination. Inappetence or vomiting. In conclusion, we have seen that diabetes is a disease which can be managed with the cooperation of owners and their veterinarians. Diabetic pets can live a very normal life with regular insulin administration, proper diet, and regular monitoring. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. Our staff members will be happy to instruct you how to administer the insulin to your pet and answer any questions which were not addressed in this presentation.